Hello everyone, welcome to another video series of Expert Matters only on OISBR's official YouTube channel. So today we have one of the most intelligent, amazing personality with us. He is loved by our campus, ISBR Business School loves him. He is our own Deepak Justin, aka DJ. We love him. Welcome to, welcome to the video series, DJ. Hi Shruti, hi everybody at ISBR, always a pleasure to be here. Yes, okay, so let me just start with this introduction. He's a corporate trainer, motivational speaker, and a five times TEDx speaker. He has trained over one lakh people over the country and over the world. You name the country and he is there. Washington, Chicago, California, London, and so many more. And he has done training session for numerous multinational companies as well, like Mercedes, JP Morgan, Titan, Infosys, Wipro, you just name it and he's there. Today, in this particular video, in our own video series, he's going to tell us some mind-blowing tips and tricks which can boost anyone's confidence from level zero to level 200. So let's get started. My first question to you, DJ, will be why is it so important to be confident and to learn how to communicate confidently? Okay, I think the one word that uh, one word answer is opportunities. Today, there's so many opportunities that are there. So, so many opportunities. I wish when I was in school, I had so many opportunities. I was not pampered with so many opportunities before. But I think today, like now, uh, the key is this, knowing how to communicate that you want to pursue a chosen field itself is important. And I think that is the starting point. And after that, to move ahead to the next level. I still remember I was mentoring this particular person who was working for a pharma company. And he was a medical representative in this pharma company and he wanted uh, to go to the next level. As a performance appraisal, everybody was planning to make a presentation about the things that they had done in the previous financial year. Now, this gentleman comes up to me and he says, DJ, I want to be ahead of the curve. So we sat together, we discussed, and we said, okay, your presentation is gonna be different, buddy. And uh, this was the title of his presentation. The things that I will do when I become the regional manager. And he never spoke about the past one year of whatever he did. He spoke about the future years of his tenure in that company. And take it from me, the management was so impressed that they actually gave him the portfolio of the regional manager. Okay, they didn't wow. call him the regional manager in that very year. They said, we're putting you on a probation basis. We'll check you out for a period of about one year. And after that, if you meet our expectations, you're up there. So the difference was very simple. What he did was he was able to communicate. And the others said, oh my God, this company is probably favoring a person that belongs to a particular caste or religion, his geography, his history and other things. No, the only difference was communication. Because right. even the previous year, he had the same geography, the same history, the same mm -hmm. caste, the same community, the same religion. So people just make allegations for the sake of allegations. But I think today with the kind of opportunities that are floating by, if you're not a confident speaker, if you're not adept in articulating your thoughts, you may just see opportunities floating by you. And you may end up blaming other people for favoritism. Amazing, amazing. So we hear a lot that communication is important. Communicating your own thoughts, your mindset is very, very important. Rather it be job, rather it be your academics, anything. Communications is a must. But how to develop it? What are the skills required for speaking so confidently and for public speaking as well? Okay, one of my mentors, like, you know, he's not a direct mentor, like, you know, I, mean, I just had an opportunity. He's a world champion of public speaking. His name is Craig Valentine. Uh, happened to do dinner with him when he was in India. Well, he said this beautiful thing. He said, to create a masterpiece, you need to master the pieces. Oh. And I thought it was very profound, very deep. And to be a masterpiece also, you need to master the pieces. What he was referring to is starting off with the basics. Don't discount the basics. A lot of people ask me, what are the tricks of the trade? I said, I tell them, learn the trade first. The tricks can be learned later. You know, so learn the basics, the absolute brass tacks when it comes to anything for that matter, a skill like public speaking or probably a, a, you know, a, a vocation like finance or finance or HR or anything. You know, learn the basics, the absolute brass tacks of it. And then after that, keep adding brick by brick, layer by layer till such time that you reach a level of expertise and competence and then after that like you know you do what is called as reverse mentoring you learn from people who are younger than you and that's what i'm doing now <laughs> i learned from a five-year-old boy he's my son 
he teaches me much more than what I, because he is wired to the next generation. So obviously that's where I belong to, I want to belong to. So, so I guess like, you know, yeah. So that's the right, key. Right. So as a beginner DJ who has fear a lot of public speaking and kind of get anxious or something. So people do have it. It can range from nervousness to paralyzing fear and panic attacks. Many people face situations of, fear and they avoid public speaking situations altogether and they suffer through them shaking hands and quavering voice and so many other things but what works for them as a beginner how can i get how can we get their journey towards becoming confident by speaking publicly okay fine so uh, mark twain said this he said there are two kinds of speakers the nervous ones and the liars so what he meant was everybody's nervous and <laughs> Anyone who says who's not nervous is a liar. That's Mark Twain's quote. Well, I would say there are two kinds of nervousness. One is a nervousness that borders around excitement. You know, I get excited when I stand in front of an audience. The bigger the audience, the merrier it is for me. So it's a nervousness that actually boils down to excitement and enthusiasm, where I'm able to channelize it into something which is quite positive. In the world of stress, they say there are two kinds of stress. One is the you stress, which is a positive stress, mm -hmm. and the other is the negative stress. You know, so I'd say, like, you know, if with practice you get to developing your you stress, which I think is a positive space to belong to. So uh, I would say that, you know, if you fear anything for that matter, in this case, public speaking, uh, expose yourself more to it. The more in psychology it's called the exposure effect, the more you're exposed to something that you fear, the less you start fearing it. You know, it's like watching a horror movie. You know, the first time you see the ghost, like, you know, I mean, till the ghost comes on the screen, you're nervous. And after that, you probably start admiring the ghost. You say, ah, oh, it's better than the hero and the heroine. <laughs> it looks cuter. The makeup is good. Probably I should try that for Halloween. You know, so you get a lot of other ideas. It doesn't scare you anymore. So the same thing happens when it comes to public speaking also. Like, you know, for those of you who are nervous, who get pre-speech jitters, I would say try and expose yourself more then you'll know how to channelize yourself. And there is no alibi to better preparation. They say the secret to real estate is location, location, location. The secret of public speaking is preparation, preparation, preparation. So the more you prepare, the less nervous you are. And the better you prepare, the more excited you are. Awesome, awesome. So DJ, we hear it a lot of time that everybody has to learn public speaking, has to be confident while they're speaking. We have taken a lot many sessions from you and we have loved the experience. So many of my batchmates have loved speaking confidently. They were very nervous initially, but now they have changed the way they express their feelings, the way they communicate and everything has been changed. So let us just tell our viewers, why is it necessary to speak so confidently? Why is it uh, necessary to learn public speaking when you have a job opportunity in your hand? I would say that uh, the higher you go, the more you need to communicate, whether you're communicating one-on-one -on -one, you're communicating to a group of people, you're communicating to an entire company or a team, you need to communicate. And I would say that, you know, every form of communication is a form of a speech. You know, one-on-one, -on -one, it's a conversation. If there's an intent, a serious intent, it's a dialogue. And a group of people, it's a discussion. And if it's a, more than 20 people, it's a public address or a public speech. And if it is probably for about a hundred people, like, you know, you need to elevate your speech to the level of a performance. So today you have a lot of CEOs and directors of organizations who hire personal coaches, number one, to write their speeches or to draft and craft their presentations. And the second thing to also help them out with the delivery and they're spending a fortune. And I was given to understand like that the going rate is anywhere between say $500 to $1,000 per hour. So I think the best place to start off is at college. Why do you want to waste your $500 per hour or $1,000 per hour for a coach? Right. You, know, you might as well learn it at the college level and you can save the trouble and the money too. Definitely. So a lot many businessmen, a lot many CEOs today are learning public speaking, how to be efficient and effective while you are communicating your thoughts, expressing your feelings, expressing your mindset, the ideas you have inside you. So what are the scope of learning communication skills and public speaking? Okay, uh, the sky is the limit, I would say, like, you know, the scope is the sky is the limit, because I guess, um, as I told you, there are so many subsets of public speaking communication. So I guess, uh, I mean, uh, today, I mean, every day, there's someone or the other is inventing something new. 
in storytelling itself like you know i have been through at least some 10 master classes one is called haiku the japanese style of storytelling and there's a person who says like don't tell a story show a story there's a digital storytelling there's a digital sorry there's a visual storytelling there's a visual storytelling for converting data into images so there are different ways in which like you know every single component of presentations communication and public speaking is getting um slotted into so the question is like you know the deeper you go one is from the length perspective and second is in terms of the depth perspective like you know how deep do you want to go you know today even like you know can you inject humor you know humor itself there are different kinds of humor again like you know there's a canned humor there's a spontaneous humor patricia Fripp, the world's uh leading i mean one of the leading public speaking coaches she says that uh there's something called prepared spontaneity can you practice prepared spontaneity that so that like now the audience thinks you're spontaneous but you're very well prepared so there are a lot of things because so i think the scope in terms of learning is limitless and the scope in terms of application again is limitless so don't limit yourself with something saying that yeah i went through a, a certification course on public speaking and now i'm competent i'm way up there right 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 definitely definitely agreed with you so dj we have come up or uh, almost concluded the video we have covered almost all the points so lastly we would like to tell our viewers all the students watching this video right now all the ma upcoming management generation right now one line of motivation from you okay i don't know whether there's motivation but uh i love you all in isbr that's my second home that's my sanctuary uh, you people really are wonderful. And all I would say is this, don't stop dreaming. Okay, dream very, very big. You know, because the only thing that you'll regret in your life is this, the fact that you didn't give your dreams wings to fly. So keep dreaming. You people are amazing dreamers every time I interact with you. And some of you, when you share your dreams with me, I really wish I was back in time. I could go back and borrow your dream and make it mine. You know, so don't stop dreaming big, like, you know, because the world needs dreamers and the most important thing is when you try to hitch your dreams to a realistic engine the dream becomes a goal and when you give it a, it becomes a vision and when that vision is given a realistic deadline the vision becomes a goal and when the goal is pursued with strategic planning with proper decisions you are able to make this world a better place so yes wishing you all a better place i'm sorry shruti that is more than one line okay so it is probably a one minute of uh, motivation that i wanted to leave you so the best is yet to be don't stop till your good is better okay this is one line for you if you wanted the one line like and i don't stop till your good is better your better is best and believe that even the best of things can be improved okay thank you so much beautiful, being a wonderful beautiful. Host. thank you so much it was lovely interviewing you i never thought that i will interview you it was lovely dj we all miss you we want you back in campus soon so see you soon thank you so much for taking your time from your busy schedule loved interviewing you see you soon thank you so much thank you so much take care thank you've been you. a wonderful host bye, -bye. take care bye